on the plane with President Kennedy. We had the opportunity to meet Mrs. Kennedy and Caroline before we took off. I think Caroline really cut us down to size and put us back in our proper position, though, when after being introduced, she looked up and said, where's the monkey? The world came to Cape Kennedy to celebrate as the space program reached its zenith in 1969. On July 16th, tomorrow, three Americans would leave this place bound for the moon. There are pre-launch parties all over the Cape. Jitters, too, of course, all over the Cape and all over the country. By dawn, the sightseers, lots of sightseers, are in place. John Kennedy's challenge to put a man on the moon by the end of the decade motivated a half a million American workers and 200 million other Americans to prepare for this moment. The crew has been awake since quarter to five. Command module pilot Michael Collins, lunar module commander Buzz Aldrin, and mission commander Neil Armstrong have their breakfast down here on Earth. They will digest that breakfast a few hours from now on their way to the moon. Every step has been rehearsed over and over and over. They are cool customers, these pioneers, for men who are going further into the unknown than Magellan ever did or Vespucci or Columbus, much further. They are going a quarter of a million miles up and out and away. They will be further from home than any humans have ever been before. Good morning. It's T minus one hour, 29 minutes and 53 seconds and counting in just an hour and a half. If all goes well, Apollo 11 astronauts, Armstrong, Aldrin and Collins are to lift off from pad 39A out there on the voyage man always has dreamed about. Next stop for them, the moon. We passed T minus 60, 55 seconds and counting. Neil Armstrong reported back when he received the good wishes. Thank you very much. We know it will be a good flight. Good luck and Godspeed. 40 seconds away from the Apollo 11 liftoff. All the second stage tanks now pressurized. 35 seconds and counting. We are still go with Apollo 11. 30 seconds and counting. Astronauts report it feels good. T minus 25 seconds. 20 seconds and counting. T minus 15 seconds. Guidance is internal. 12, 11, 10, 9. Ignition sequence start. 6. At 9.32 a.m., the liftoff is flawless. The Saturn rocket slowly gathers speed. A billion people around the world watch and urge the giant engine on and wish those being propelled by it got speed. Two and a half minutes later, at more than 6,000 miles per hour, the first stage separates. And the second stage booster ignites, almost tripling Apollo's speed to more than 15,000 miles per hour. At an altitude of 116 miles, the rocket's second stage will separate and the spacecraft will enter Earth orbit. The beginning is over. The trip, the real trip, lies ahead.
They are traveling at nearly 25,000 miles an hour now. The third stage is jettisoned. The command module Columbia and the lunar module Eagle set out on a three-day journey to the moon. Eagle, Houston, we, Houston, we see you on the stairwell, over. Roger, Eagle, I'm done. Roger, how does it look? Eagle, I'm Roger. And now the lunar module Eagle has separated from the Columbia and is cruising above the surface of the moon, ready to begin its descent. With minutes to go, Neil Armstrong of Wapakoneta, Ohio, and Buzz Aldrin of Montclair, New Jersey, make final preparations. Okay, all flight controllers, gonna go for landing. Retro. Go. Rhino. Go. Guidance. Go. Control. Go. Telcom. Go. GNC. Go. Ecom. Go. Surgeon. Go. Capcom, we're go for landing. 2,000 feet. 2,000 feet. Into the ag, 47 degrees. Roger. And then, just above the surface, a major malfunction. Eagle's computers are overloaded. A 1201 alarm. They must decide instantly whether or not to abort. 1201. His heart races, but Neil Armstrong takes control. We're go, flight. Okay, we're go. We're go. Same type. We're go. Roger, 1202. We copy it. 35 degrees. 750. Coming down to 23. With fuel dangerously low, Armstrong maneuvers his craft to a better landing site. 75 feet. That's looking good. Down a half. Six forward. 60 seconds. Lights on. Forward. Forward. 40 feet down. Two and a half. Picking up some dust. Eight shadow. Four forward. Drift into the right a little. 30 seconds. Forward. Just. Contact light. Okay. Engine stop. We copy it down, Eagle. Tranquility base here. The Eagle has landed. What? <laughs> We're going to be busy for a minute. Mm. Okay, I just checked. Uh, getting back up to that first step. Uh, it's, uh, that isn't collapsed too far, but uh, it's adequate to get back up. I'm uh, at the foot of the ladder. The lamb footbeds are on the... Uh, uh, depressed in the surface about uh, one or two inches. I'm going to step off the limb. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Oh, that looks beautiful for radio. It has a stark beauty all its own. It's uh, like m much of the high desert of. Uh, United States. It's uh, different, but it's very pretty out here. Houston, Columbia on high gain, over. Columbia, this is Houston reading you loud and clear, over. Yeah, reading you loud and clear. How's it going? Roger, the EVA is progressing beautifully. They're setting up the flag now. Eagle is down on the moon. It will stay on the moon for just over 21 hours. Uh, Michael Collins orbits above in Columbia. Houston, Armstrong and Aldrin have fuel enough for only one attempt to rejoin Columbia. They make it. The men who have been further from home than any before them can come home. Uh, roughly about uh, 50,000. Apollo 11, if you're Houston. I've got the morning news here if you're interested, over. Yeah, we sure are. We're ready to copy and comment. Okay, uh, first off, uh, Looks like it's going to be impossible to get away from the fact that uh, you guys are dominating all the news back here to us. Even uh, Pravda and Russia is headlining the mission and calls Neil the czar of the ship. And in Corby, England, uh, an Irishman, John Coyle, has won the world porridge eating championship by consuming 23 bowls of instant oatmeal. I'd like to enter Aldrin in the oatmeal eating contest next time. He's on his 19th ball. <laughs> Good evening, I'm Walter Cronkite. Man's first trip to the moon, a magnificent eight-day voyage spanning time and space and history, ended a day when three American explorers brought their small ship down safely in the Pacific. Apollo 11 astronauts Neil Armstrong, Edwin Aldrin, and Michael Collins landed their spacecraft southwest of Hawaii at 10 minutes of 1 Eastern time, nine miles from the recovery ship and two miles off target. 
It was only day before yesterday, measured on the clock of evolution, that man stood half erect in the swamp and gazed up in terror at the lunar light. It was only yesterday that he tied a scrap of sail to a branch on a few planks and fought moon tide to voyage beyond the shallow basin of his first abode. It was only this morning, by evolution's clock, that he fashioned a glass that brought distance close and showed him that his world, the epicenter of everything, was only a small speck in a second-rate solar system. Now tonight, man has taken a small step, mankind a giant leap, toward the galaxies through which spaceship Earth 